Hey, it's Slash Tracks. It's George Hardy from Troll 2, and you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. You guys check out Troll 2, Texas Cotton, and my new film coming out, Cyst. Got to give you guys a pep talk. I got to prepare you guys for watching Troll 2. George Hardy, Troll 2 forever. Enjoy the podcast. Welcome, everybody, to Slash Tracks, episode number five. Uh, today, Josh and I are going to be covering Troll 2, so it's Slash Tracks with Alex and Josh. Sorry, Josh, I messed that up already. That's all right, and check out uh, that amazing thumbnail. Well, from what you can see of it there, uh, I'll actually make it bigger when this is on the, on the channel. Um, but yeah, that was uh, done by Alex. Uh, he makes some amazing thumbnails for these episodes. Um, I always thought I looked a little bit like a troll, and now it's official. You look, goblin, like coward, you look like the cowardly lion a little bit in that in that thumbnail. Like a like a goblin version of the cowardly lion. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Troll 2, man. This movie is not a sequel to Troll. I don't know why the cover art for it says the original Boogeyman is back. I don't think I've ever had a goblin, uh, you know, be a boogeyman for me in any sense. Um, there's no trolls in the movie whatsoever. <laughs> It's, it's a reimagining uh, it's, of Troll. <laughs> it's considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. There's actually a documentary we were talking about called Best Worst Movie. And uh, you watched that the other day. You said you had seen it, but you'd forgotten it. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit before we watched this uh, amazingly bad movie. Um, also, how cool is it that George Hardy did our introduction there? Yeah, um, that was that was amazing. Like when you showed showed me that uh, he did the introduction for us, I was at the gym uh, stacking some weight uh, back on a weight tree, and I almost dropped it on my foot because I was like, "Holy crap, that's George Hardy!" <laughs> he gave us. He didn't really give us a pep talk, but uh, I, I think he was pretty much saying, "There's no way to prepare you for watching Troll Two. Um, George Hardy, exactly, Troll Two for life." <laughs> yeah, I think that's exactly what he was like. You guys are up. You know, you guys are in for it. It basically is what he was saying. He's like, I'm supposed to uh, give you a pep talk, prepare you for <laughs> Troll 2. Uh, George Hardy, Troll 2 forever. You know, that's that's the pep talk right there. Just having him do that is uh, pretty cool. Um, he's such a nice, he seems like such a nice guy. Like, uh, this movie was just something he did on a whim. And, you know, he's a dentist, as the documentary shows. Um, and since the documentary came out. He's gotten like three more film roles. He just played a sheriff in a movie called uh, Texas Cotton. And it's like a serious drama. And uh, apparently he's got a movie coming out called Cyst. I can only imagine from the name of that, it sounds like a uh, gory horror movie or something. I have to look into that. Um, but what did you think of George Hardy whenever you saw the documentary Best Worst Movie? Well, when I started, I remember the first time I watched the documentary Best Worst Movie, and they, they start out in George's house where he's making, like, a smoothie. Yeah. I, I had never seen Troll 2. I wasn't even sure where they were going with this opening scene, so I was kind of confused. But uh, he comes across as a mild-mannered southern gentleman. Like, he definitely, he's the only guy I've ever uh, seen where his ex-wife speaks glowingly <laughs> about him. Yeah, makes me wonder yeah. why they split up. Um, Troll 2 would, fame went to his head, Josh. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to get into that in a second because he did let it go to his head a little bit. Um, it was so cool to see this this nice guy, this, this father, this dentist, southern gentleman, all of a sudden this movie he did has become a cult classic in a way. People have Troll 2 watch parties. They're showing them at theaters in New York and, and all over the country. And uh, he gets invited to it to one, and that turns into, like, a whole tour he does. And you see him, like, go from, why do people want to see this, uh, to him really embracing the celebrity of it. You know, people cheering for him when he does the lines. Can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. Um, like, he, he says that over and over just to get that, you know, uh, the cheers and stuff on those shows, which I thought it was pretty cool. But then... He ends up at a horror convention, uh, you know, with like slasher movies and stuff, and nobody's real interested. And uh, he kind of pissed you off a little bit there, didn't he? Yeah, I was, well, because you know that I'm a huge Nightmare on Elm Street guy. So 
when he was at Andre's and uh, Toy Nurk- Newkirk's table, you know, for Dream Master, and he didn't know who they were or what number in the franchise they were in, and he kind of was yeah. disrespectful. Then he was talking to the girl who played Gretchen in uh, Dream Child, and he was kind of disrespectful to, to you know towards her, uh, like he was bigger than everybody else there because of that tour he was on. Yeah, um, I didn't. That. Yeah, it went to his head. It was very much like Bart in the Simpsons episode, the I didn't do it episode. Uh, like he like he got to the tail end of his fame there and he was he was grappling with uh, with why people weren't fawning over him. But you know what? Uh, he's a human being. Me and you talked yep. about this. You know, I'm sure he doesn't have people uh, celebrating him quite as much when he does a root canal. Yeah. Uh, than when he shows up at one of those showings. So, you and know, he and I, he's not a big horror fan. He even said so. So I can't, that's, that, you know, it irks me as a Freddy fan, but at the same time, he's such a nice guy underneath all the, you know, under, he was on a buzz riding high on the celebrity he was getting from the tour, and his expectations weren't met, he was expecting something bigger, so it probably hurt his feelings a bit at the same time, uh, he's not a big horror fan, so he was uncomfortable, and, uh, you know, I, forg- I forgive that, because I, I kind of get that, um, but yeah, it was just... Seeing the tour, though, was really awesome. Uh, seeing how many people just love this movie, uh, even though it's so bad, and they love it because it's bad. Uh, what was that <laughs> office party? They did one, like, every year for four years at that point. And, yeah, uh, it, well, and one of them was having, like, an, a Troll 2 Olympics game set yes. up. Yeah, it, it was like an annual deal. There. Yeah, yeah. So that looked like a lot of fun. I, I could definitely get into that. I thought it was cool that they brought in so much of the cast, you know, um, and then they're like reenacting the scenes, you know, Steven, the guy that played the kids, like, what are you yeah. going to do to me, daddy? <laughs> exactly. That was hilarious. And he couldn't even keep a straight face no. when he reenacting that scene. Uh, the director, he was a class act, man. He was so, he took it so serious. I, I actually. He was an uh, artist, for, man. I actually got, he actually hit me in the feels. At the part where he's holding his movie in the canister, you know, the film. Yeah, towards and, the end. Yeah, yeah, that actually hit me in the feels a bit because I get that when you create something, and you know, him probably holding that for the first time uh, like that, and people appreciating it. But at the same time, he was under the impression that these people love the movie because it was a masterpiece, you know. Yeah. And yeah. not because it's so bad that it's good, and to see him at these at these shows and Q&As and stuff, getting so hurt and, and upset, uh, you know, when they're talking about it, was kind of funny. And then they go to the house the movie was filmed in, and they're just goofing around for the documentary, redoing the scenes. George Hardy's carrying full-grown Steven down the hallway. And this director's, like, screaming out demands at them and treating them like they're, you know, uh, young actors again. Uh, what did you think when you saw that? Like he's he's like abu- like being verbally abusive to these people. I so that scene I didn't hit me as much as it hit you, but it is odd that he's trying to direct them. The thing that bothered me with the director was when they were at the Q and A's, and the other actors were just genuinely telling like, "Hey, I didn't get a script that day. Nobody got a script. Yeah. Um, we didn't really know what we were filming. We were kind of all over the place in the shooting schedule. It was a super low budget. Anytime one of the actors tried to tell their actual story." the director would get upset, cross his arms, and start piping up and speaking and yelling over them. Yeah. And that's, yeah, and I think that's really rude and distracting. Um, so that bothered me. And it also bothered me when um, he, the director was uh, trying to, like, well, okay, so when he sees in America, he's in the movie line, and he's talking to the people going to the shows, and he's like, hey... Uh, you know, why, why do you like this movie? And they're like, oh, it's great, blah, blah, blah. And he feels, I felt really good for him because he genuinely was like, this is awesome. They appreciate my work. Yeah. And then later on, he, he comes to the, you know, realization that they like it because it's bad. Yeah. You could tell that he, he like, if it was a real movie, that was a turning point for his character because he <laughs> kind of became the villain yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. they were all laughing at parts, he's like, it's not even a funny part. Why are they laughing? Exactly. Um, exactly. So he, you could see him villaining out. <laughs> you could see the wheels turning in his head. I was hoping they would have had the actress that played, like, the witch in it, you know, in the documentary. But Yeah, that would have been nice. Um, but Darren Ewing is probably my favorite side character. 
he's the uh, they're eating her and then they're gonna eat me. Oh my god. Um, he's on our thumbnail. He's right there. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him a little bit uh, leading up to our episode. Fingers crossed that he's gonna do a little uh, video shout out. If it's not here, I understand he's had some uh, some family uh, tragedy recently. So thoughts go I'm out sorry. to him. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, but uh, he's he's my favorite. Uh, what would you say, supporting actor in the movie? Um, and some of the stuff is just so crazy in this movie. I cannot wait to hear the stuff we're going to have to say about it because I'm going into this, didn't plan anything. It's going to all be on the fly. Um, and, you know, a lot, of people, a lot of people don't realize how serious this show is, man. They think we're just sitting here goofing around, but what you don't understand is two months ago, me and him both got a text message from somebody threatening to kill us if we didn't riff on a movie every two weeks. And, uh, you know, they call us all the time with the voice changer, you know, what's your favorite movie to riff this week? You know, stuff like that. And uh, the threat's real. You know, if we don't, if we don't riff on these movies, uh, we're going to become slasher victims. So, uh, I never answer phone calls from block numbers or out of the area, you know, so out of the area code, you know. So when I finally answered, because it called me like 19 times, and it just said 911, bitch. So I had to answer, you know, I had to answer the call. And basically he said that he had, you know, you tied up at an undisclosed location. And if I ever wanted to see or talk to you again, I had to also show up at the location and agree to watch these shitty movies over and over again. Yep. So it's that's been trying. It's stressful. You know, I hope that we uh, keep him happy and he doesn't show up and try to kill us one of these days. Um. <laughs> well, when he said we were going to watch Ghostbusters... Uh, last I was episode. excited. Yeah, so was I. So was I. I got my, I got my proton pack out. I like had my my figure set up. I actually went and bought a couple unopened Ghostbusters. You know, getting ready, and uh, I even had an ecto cooler on ice, ready to drink. Damn it, I'm jealous. And then I found out it was that pile of shit, Ghostbusters 2016. But you know what? I wouldn't have expected anything less from this guy because he's a cruel son of a bitch. Yeah. He's like Freddy and Michael and Jason and Chucky, just all thrown into a blender, and uh, just just an asshole. Um, yeah. I mean, look, he's, we're having to watch Troll Two this week, and next and, and next time we we got a double feature of some of the worst dinosaur movies uh, made in the past, you know, thirty forty years. So uh, Jurassic World. <laughs> hey, I like Jurassic World, <laughs> asshole. Now, uh, Carnosaur One and Two is going to be. Oh, uh, I've I would rather watch Carnosaur than Jurassic World. <laughs> Don't let the guy know that I would rather You've watch Carnosaur. You've already ruined Carnosaur. it now. You know he's watching. I liked uh, Fallen Kingdom because uh, the second half felt like a like a Haunted Mansion type scary movie. It was different. And, uh, haunted, Ma haunted Mansion. Not That's Haunted. Uh, uh, Eddie like, Murphy movie from Disney? <laughs> no, not not haunted. What it's I mean like is like the worst Disney movies I've ever ever the, seen. The second half of the movie was like actually scary. They're like, you know, in this house with this monster. It's not even a dinosaur. The endo the endoraptor thing. It was yeah. just creepy as shit. You know, it was different. The first half was normal Jurassic Park stuff, but the second half was actually pretty creepy. And the new one that's coming out is going to have Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum. And uh, all them back playing, like, starring roles in the movie, uh, not Ooh. just cameos. You're kind of speaking my language there. I'd love to see more Jeff Goldblum. I, after I saw him in Ragnarok, I was like, man, he's still got it. Jeff Goldblum still has major presence on the screen. He's one of my all-time favorites. You know, mm -hmm. he had that little part in Fallen Kingdom, uh, Jurassic World 2. Yeah. And then when I found out him and Sam Neill and, I uh, can't remember her name, that played Ellie Sattler are going to be back for Jurassic World 3. I was like, oh, it's going to be cameos again, right? And mm -hmm. then it came out that they're actually starring in it. It's not cameos. So I'm, it's going awesome. to be supposed to tie it all up. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm afraid if we keep talking about Jurassic World, we're going to get a phone call and our life threatened again. <laughs> so um, what do you say, man? We dive into Neil Bog. Um, Let's do it, man. Before, before we get killed. Um, you, so, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Do you think there's ever a chance that this guy is going to let us watch Ernest Scared Stupid? I would love it. Oh, my God. Uh, I mean, I would hate it. Ew. Don't do that to us. Please don't make us watch that. Please, 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 please. 
I really hope he makes us watch it. Please yeah. don't make us watch that. That That's would the suck worst thing you can do to. to us. Ew, ew. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're going to watch along with us, we're going to do a countdown from three. So get your Troll 2 copy ready. I know you've got that thing out watching it daily, so it shouldn't take you long to get it ready. It's probably already in your DVD player, Blu-ray player, or loaded up so you can watch it daily. Um, so yeah, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, in three, two, one, play. You should have the Metro Gold line yep. right now. Roaring. He's, ro he's, he's roaring right now. Scariest part of the whole movie right there. Narrator. Peter was not a courageous boy. Peter's a courageous man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's a boy? He Peter's day job was cobbling shoes to shoes in the forest. <laughs> it's Elf He's selling fig Newtons. Elf's younger brother. Elf the movie, you know, comedy. Yeah. How is that a boy? I don't. Mo I horror don't movies talk in the eighties. About 80s. hippies like that. Horror movies in the eighties didn't worry about how old you actually were. They just tell the audience how old you are. Like Hoolies, I'm going back to college. Yeah. It said little people of the night. It's broad daylight. <laughs> that that book said Davy and the Goblins, and the guy's name is Peter. <laughs> yeah, See? It says Davy. Davy and the Goblins. Yes. I won't interrupt you anymore. Okay. The book says to make a long story short. What? I'm, I've never read a book that said that. Make a long story short. Film a rage. Trauma. They they waste no time showing the monster on the screen. There's no veiled anything. Is that is that goblin music? What the hell is that? It sounds like they're in a goblin training montage. Yeah, they're getting ready for a fight. Um, are the brown potato sacks supposed to be, like, their actual fur, or are they wearing potato sacks? I think it's just costumes. Okay, because, wow. Your voice got lower on me all of a sudden. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but I can't see you. You're a halfway gone. All right. I hope that's supposed to be clothing and not fur. Sure. <laughs> Come on, kid. You got super long. So he hit the back of his head, but the front of his head is bleeding. Okay. Uh, head wounds are unpredictable, and they bleed a lot, so. <laughs> what? They're like, we want to rob Ryan. Hey, you Tyke. said you weren't going to interrupt him again, kid. You promised. What'd you say? Sorry. They're like, we want a Rob Reiner-esque guy to read Davy and the Goblins. Does he have stitches already? Uh, Those freckles no. are 100% real. <laughs> That's where most of the budget went, was to her freckles. Did she stitch his forehead up for him or something? Davy looks like a young boy. When I look at him, I don't think mid-30s at all. Peter. And he's not even drinking and eating it. He's just, like, putting it on his mouth. <laughs> Does anybody she's else of, feel like a Wendy's hamburger right now? <laughs> she's one of those people that gets off by watching uh, other people eat <laughs> or by feeding other people. <laughs> that smile on her face. Like me, rawr! <laughs> Why are you trying to, like scare the shit out of your grandkid for. Dude, I'm loving that basketball lamp over there. I need to get my hands on one of those. Is that a first edition of Davy and the Goblins? Yep. And there's Taz. Taz. <laughs> even Taz knows. He's like, I don't even know how they got the rights for me to be in this film. I hate it whenever I sweat uh, spinach smoothie. <laughs> No, blue. Yes, green. I said green, kid. Shut up. You said you wouldn't interrupt me anymore. Oh, man. 
he uh, this is St. Patty's Day just gone horribly wrong. Hey, at least they're vegetarians, man. Plant man. A plant. Poison Ivy's second cousin removed. Have you read this book, kid? The grandpa, the grandpa's kind of getting off on scaring the shit out of this kid. Oh shit! His name's Josh. I forgot. Wait a second. The mom what? looks like the same age as the grandfather, almost. All right. The actor who played the grandfather was only like forty-two. Oh, yeah. Hey, have you ever, have you ever watched horror movies and it's like uh, from the eighties and um, like the perfect example is the doctor in Dream Warriors. Uh, Doctor Neil Gordon is like thirty-two. Yeah. But I'm 36, and when I see him on screen, I'm like, holy crap, he's old. Yeah. But he's younger than me. I know. It's crazy. It's like this mom right here is actually in real life. She At this point, she's probably 26. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's Bugs Bunny on the nightstand. This movie was uh, brought to you by Warner Joker's Brothers. Back there. Warner Brothers, yeah. Because Batman, yeah, the Batman 1989 movie poster is also behind him. That was the killing joke thing back there, wasn't it? This kid's got good taste. He's got some good stuff. It can't do us all bad. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of exposit. Like, that's uh, a little foreshadowing. It, you already well, said goodnight, dear mom. Or do they? No, they don't. Or do they? Oh, here we go. This this is what the, the director, where was he from again? Uh, Italy, Italy. Yeah, this is what Italian directors in the 80s thought American teenage girls were like. This whole scene right here. This is what American teenage girls like to do, no? She's pumping out, dude. She's getting ready. She's, uh... This, this reminds me of Nightmare on Elm Street 4. It's like Debbie. Why did the mom like fucking lift and weights again? <laughs> oh, that little scamp. Working on her traps again. This part's so... Who are the goblins? The goblins? <laughs> There's our boy George. Boy George. There's our boy George. He's got charisma, buddy. He oh, just yeah. controls this scene. His eyes are so... They're always, like, almost closed. <laughs> George was actually, I think, just had his 23rd birthday on set. 19th. <laughs> his 19th birthday on set. I'm worried about me, too. your grandpa it was his corpse though <laughs> man oh man like he his the grand the kid is having active conversations with their dead grandfather and their the dad's like just like no it's just a phase it'll pass it has it can possibly be a debilitating you know mental disease <laughs> right no problem alex, grow out of it. alex who are the goblins <laughs> they're, they're people that uh, we're going to have to watch for the next hour and a half. Because if we don't, we're going to die. <laughs> I'm worried about Joshua. I would be too, Josh. So the worried only, about me. The only thing that actually died during the making of Troll 2 was that Montreal Expos helmet. Because they are no longer a baseball team. <laughs> Did you ever have giant flashlights on your nightstand like that? Uh, no, I didn't, but I definitely had a flashlight because I liked to read in bed when I was a kid. Why? Okay, if this is what, if this, if he, if, let's see here, let's see what's out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what the Italian director thought teenage boys were like. 
so he okay, so he's terrified because his dead grandfather is reading him the Goblin book, right? Yeah. So this is all made up in his head. That that book might not even exist, right? Because the dead grandpa's holding it. Apparently, the grandpa knows. Where, oh, that's a good point. Apparently, the grandpa knows they're going there and that goblins are going to be after him somehow. I don't. Yeah. Does the book exist? And also, how many fucking reps is this girl doing? She she was doing. Well, did she just drop the weight? Like she was like doing this. She didn't have it over the bar, you know. It should have fell on her. She's doing three sets of two hundred and fifty. <laughs> Listen. Whoa. I got nothing. I got nothing. It speaks for itself. The yes. inflection is like. <laughs> oh, there's our boy. There's our boy. Yep. Favorite one. Honestly, okay. he's the best actor out of the four. Hey, so I wonder if this guy in her room, I wonder if uh, his eyebrows were billed, uh, got a credit at the end of the movie, because those things are taking up a lot of the scene here. Does George Hardy's character seem like somebody that would tear off his little nuts and eat them? (laughs) No, he he looks like more like the type of person that would like gently stroke them and try to nurse them back to health. Yeah, he, he seems like the kind of dad that would set the kids down and talk to them about why you shouldn't be sneaking in. You know, let's talk children like a, like a Danny Tanner type dad, not a Brady Bunch for sure. There there would be some, uh, some pep talks. So this girl, Josh, right. You were telling me that she doesn't have this on her, uh, like credits. Yeah. Like like she, 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 anytime, anytime somebody recognizes it, she's like, I'm not getting this job. (laughs) <laughs> uh, she's not a bad actress anymore, but it's like this. It's like the director said, "Okay, you and the guy playing your boyfriend. I want to see who can be the worst actor in every scene. Go." Well, okay. you didn't even let me finish with him. Oh. <laughs> That's how dads talk. She's also pissed off because she's never been apart from her uh, weight bench this long. Right. I could be doing reps right now, Dad. Just for this. (laughs) This, The son is back there just chilling with Grandpa. Completely mentally disturbed, out of his mind, child. Right. Back that song I like so much. Ex- yeah, listen to what song it is. Yes, you sing <laughs> that song I like so much, row, and it's row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Oh, row, row, row your merrily, boat. merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to be mock Ian Bird. Yeah, yeah. Want to hear the most annoying noise in the world? <laughs> yeah, just turn on Troll 2. Exactly. You beat me to the punchline. That looks like a scene they cut from the movie Duel, where the semi-truck is chasing the guy, Dennis Weaver, in his car. That semi-truck's honking, saying, don't put me in this fucking movie! <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you, ever, do you ever watch movies and um where they do scenes of the freeway or scenes of like just a road there's cars that are like immortalized in these movies that have no idea they're even in it yeah no it's kind of bizarre Ooh, look at that old school mountain dew can that gets me fired up josh oh i love it i love uh they put out the mountain dew throwback sometimes but it's like it's like the really old old logo like the more with with the guy the california gold rush miner looking guy on there yep I, I love two liters back when they had that pointless plastic thing on the bottom. <laughs> it covered the bottom, remember? It just yes. was like a cover for the bottom of the bottle. No you know purpose what the, whatsoever. No, the, the, on Ricky, on Trailer Park Boys, he cuts them open and he uses them as cereal bowls and as, like, drink holders. Where does he get them? 
<laughs> I don't I know. Don't anymore. He's got a bunch of them on the on the show, though. He's always using it. Yeah, we're gonna have to get this looked at. Yeah, like right now, call a call a doctor and a landscaper. Um, th- this reminds me of like the creep show where Stephen King finds the meteorite. Yes. Yeah, and uh, he kind of turns into the moss guy. Dad, stop the car and put on these horrible masks. God, whatever nice. that is, it got all inside of his mouth, and you know good and well that they weren't worried about safety precautions on the set of that movie. No way. And the and the director probably has no clue what's in it. What? Why do they... What the? Who wants to eat you, little brother? Look at the road, you idiots! Yeah, here's a here's a cheeseburger out of nowhere, wrapped in cellophane. She actually said, "Do you want some, Joshua?" So she like already made a burger out of him. There's Grandpa. Why does the ghost have to stand on the side of the road with the sign, dressed like a like a guy looking for work? <laughs> <laughs> we'll hunt for food. <laughs> He's, we'll we'll that, traumatize your, your son for food. Let's be honest. That grandpa's doing just fine in the food department. Okay. We'll traumatize your son <laughs> for kicks. boy. You see any trolls lately, scamp? I'm not your grandpa. And you're going to me. Why don't you show yourself to him and scare the shit out of him? And boogity, boogity, boogity. You know? And they'll go uh, away. I hated those hats with the rope in the front. I don't know why hats were designed like that back then. I hate them. Trying to rip on this movie. (laughs) That's not Grandpa. He don't have a book about Davy and the Goblins. (laughs) That looks like that looks like Silent Bob. uh, Years and years and years later, after uh, Jay finally left. I don't like saying bad things about kids, man. But that kid looks like he's constantly trying to go to the bathroom. He he looks like the kid from Blank Check a little bit. But the actor that played him is like cool as shit and directed that documentary. How did they get in front of the family if they left an hour? They were just talking about trying to catch up to the family. And they're ahead of the family, broke down on the side of the road. I have no idea, and I bet you the director has no idea either. <laughs> It'd be like, because um, we told you what it means. It, it means that they're down the side of the road. They see the family. <laughs> That'd be funny if the grandpa was actually, like, with the get young guys there. He's like, hey, you know, hey, let me talk to the grandson real quick. Hold on. I'm going to tell you boys a story about some goblins. All right. Tell it's time of night. It's like dusk. What, it's like four thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, it's like five o'clock. <laughs> Look, he looks like he's trying to use the bathroom. Yeah, he's having a hard time. I'm almost Don't positive listen to that little shithead. You do what you want, Daddy O. The mom just gleeked when she talked. So she gleeked. Yeah, they they couldn't do another another scene either. So the director's like, you know, hey, fuck it, huh? It's a gleek. It happens, huh? Leave it a gleek in there, Mario. Yeah, leave it a gleek alone, huh? Uh. King of Koopa and the princess. <laughs> yeah, gobbledy gook it, eh? Spaghetti and a meatball. <laughs> we love our Italian viewers. Yeah, if there's any Italian slash alcoholics, <laughs> please disregard my blatant. Uh, we butcher. love you uh, so much. Yeah, uh. Language. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the van. Boopity, boopity, boopity. <laughs> hey, the kid doesn't look like he has to urinate right now. Oh, he looks like I wasn't talking about urinating. Uh, he looks like he just finished and he feels good now. Yeah, he's good. He's loving life. And that kid is straight out of the '30s or the '40s with that add on and that outfit. Children of the corn. Yeah. My son pissed himself and thought he saw his dead grandpa. I apologize. You know how it goes. 
Jesus Christ. They got... Yeah, because this is what normal families did in the 80s. They would swap houses for a month. Uh, not take anything out. Just call up a family in some other part of the world and just swap houses with them. And that's, this, that's the master plan of the goblins. They just call around to find people dumb enough to swap houses. And that's how they eat. So I wish they yeah. were still here right now and get all the dumb people. What's the grocery situation at this house? I'm not trusting that they stocked the fridge <laughs> by the way they looked. I'm guessing it's a lot of stuff that's green. <laughs> What's it say in the ball, Josh? Oh. Eat before we eat you. Show that's it what, to your parents, you idiot. They're, that's that's what all, they... Sorry. Josh, that's what's on the paperwork of a timeshare when you sign, actually. <laughs> he's, been, he's been trying to warn his family, and he had physical proof from the people in the back of the truck. There's no way he could have made that himself. And what does he do with it? Just throws it away. <laughs> because yeah. mom, dad... Remember the goblins I told you about? Look. Oh, my goodness. Everything has a green theme to it, too. Why? Hospitality. You know what they say about <laughs> hospitality. You don't piss on it. There's Grandpa. The rules of the hidden as a ghost, I don't understand. I don't either. I think the guy uh, who directed Freddy's Revenge had his, had his hand in this film. Grandpa, why don't you go show yourself to them and explain it to them? I would legitimately be worried about my son at this point. <laughs> yes, yes, especially after what he's about to do. I mean, Davy or Peter, Davy or Peter, the man boy from the book. Remember the book I was reading you? that doesn't exist because I don't exist and this is all just BS in your head because you're mentally disturbed, son? Because your sister's the worst actress in the world? <laughs> okay, if he can stop time, why didn't he do that before they drove to Nilbog and made him, uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is young Zach Morris. <laughs> uh, no, that's Zach Morris's grandpa. Oh, I didn't see that. The, I thought he died. No, the grandpa <laughs> did it. Okay. Like, like, why didn't he just do that and tell the son to go Rip out their the cables in their engine, you know, before Dude, they that left. Cook, Josh, that cookie looks like one of the Halloween cookies they come out with, the sugar ones with the frosting. Those cookies are dynamite. Oh, I like do a, love those. I one. love the shit out of those. Yeah. I, now. I, we, uh, I, I want one now. Should we make some green corn on the cob? No, just put a strip of green snot on it, <laughs> and uh, that'll, that'll, that'll do it. But she's not biting the part that's green. It doesn't matter. Green's on there. People get the point. No, let's not just take all the food and throw it outside. The only solution is to, uh, mm, I what? must pee on it. What is the what is the meal they're having here? Is this just dessert, or this isn't supposed to be dinner? Corn and cookies. Okay, so he just pissed all over that dinner table. Yep. In the face. Leave it where, the, do it where there's no marks. Use a phone book. The kid should have pissed on the film. The film roll. <laughs> pissed on his grandpa. Well, it's pee. What, what do you think it's going to do? I, I can't talk here. Because <laughs> that was all the food in the house on the table. I know. And, you, like, they were expecting that other family to feed them the entire time? They're not going to go get their own food? <clears throat> he thinks his son is giving him a challenge to fast. That's the, that's the writer's... Uh... Oh, by the way, the writer of this movie was the wife of the director. Oh, she... yeah, yeah. The, the, she uh, had said that the reason the the trolls you know trolls quote unquote that aren't trolls are yeah. vegetarian because a lot of her friends were vegetarian at the time and they annoyed her like uh some of this makes no sense and it's like the director didn't have the heart to tell his wife you know 
That's bad. <laughs> anytime, anytime you have a foreign director trying to get like American culture down, it it always comes off as goofy. Almost like Rennie Harlan had a hard time on Dream Master because you know he was he's not from America. He he wanted to have a bunch of characters like staying the night at each other's houses on school nights, and they had to tell him like that we don't do that. You know, in America, right. yeah, can't do that. Uh, did you see that monkey there with the golden egg thing that they were watching on the TV? No, because I was focused on that Mountain Dew can. But uh... okay, <laughs> they were sitting there watching, and like this mon- guy in a monkey suit touches a golden egg and starts flying off into the air, and then it cuts away. You know who the angry video game nerd is? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He did a whole video about that movie that that clips from. Really? You you gotta watch it. It's so I'm... funny. He's good. I really like his... Uh, well, James the, Rolfe is hilarious. Uh, the videos he does of the Friday the 13th and the Nightmare on Elm Street games. You like shitty games? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he... Oh, God. Here we go. Stop, I say. He's a uh, I couldn't do this like movie. I'd look at the script and be like, dude, people do not talk like this. Man. You know, Stop, so I many say. people are so concerned with fame, they'll do any kind of shitty movie just to say they're in a movie. I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. I'd have to read the script first. I've been called a... a, a I don't, I'm about to make a really dark joke, but I'm not going there. <laughs> not going there. <laughs> the goblins! Here we go. Money shot. Yeah, because that's how you react. When you see... Like, it's just like he's seen him before. No problem. I'll take care of him. My plaid Can't shorts and I will handle love this. You, man. Sorry you had to, like, play this script out. Oh, my God. That's the he's... worst one right there. The yeah, worst. these masks are terrible. At least the ones with no eyes are okay. You just walk right up to them. You don't even know what they are. You've never seen anything like them before. They're holding spears. <laughs> we need a narrator. We need the narrator back. Julie's narrator. Where are you? We need you right. <laughs> oh. And so it had begun. The evil one right, willing stop. the boy off. Narrator made me miss it. He got stabbed. <laughs> got stabbed right in the freaking chest. I know it, the scream of a woman. I, I've made plenty of them scream. <laughs> that hey, the guy in the yellow shirt must be wearing the yellow shirt he had to buy himself to replace the other yellow shirt because yes. it's missing the logo. I noticed it. I saw a post on Facebook that said seri- had a list of serial killers and their astrological sign. Yeah. It was mostly Virgo and Sagittarius. None of them were Leo. Like, I'm a Leo. And I said, ah, the moral of the story is Leos never get caught. <laughs> Did <laughs> you see Vir- this house. Virgo? It's a house, by the way. That's a house? He said, let's go into this house. And the windows are definitely not. Hey, I love a good canopy bed, Josh. I got hot in my room all of a sudden. Like, I'm covered in sweat. <laughs> the guy from Ghoulies loaned out, like, the set for this scene. This looks like where he had his cauldron. <laughs> Dude, be careful. You're lucky he didn't do it that time. Every time you say Ghoulies, that narrator comes back. <laughs> Did you say Ghoulies? And so did it begin. No! <laughs> <laughs> cool. They went. They got somebody that was like in a play, you know, from Broadway. She's projecting her villain. stage voice. By the way, it's like a hundred degrees outside right now, and my AC uh, is not working that great. Yeah, it was hotter than hell when I ran yesterday. Whew, like I'm sitting here, like sweating, trying to. Enjoy this movie. Enjoy this movie. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm sure that's really helping. <laughs> this film is making you feel that much better. Her ancestors came from Stonehenge. Like, they all lived, like, in... It's not a very big place to live. We got uh, herpes. Yeah, I just got a spear in my chest, and he's <laughs> totally collected, almost. Like, and her insides are turning into mush and vegetation. <laughs> Have some fizzy lifting drink. It'll calm you down. I missed her name, but it's like a really crazy name. I can't remember it now. She looks like she just chews tobacco 24-7. Her teeth are wretched. Or she's got a meth problem, one or the other. <laughs> yeah. The what properties? Vegetab vegetative or vegetable. Vegetable, vegetable live? Yeah, she flubbed that bad. Premature of vegetation? Would you also like some Turkish delight before you go into the wardrobe? Some fizzy lifting drinks. <laughs> what it looks like. You said it was broth. This is food. <laughs> I said it was frothy, not broth. Ooh, yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, she's what loving life she? right now. Yeah, she is like... <laughs> Not gonna lie. I looked like that lady many a morning after uh, Jaeger bombs. <laughs> just green crap coming out of me. Just feel like shit. Grabbing the walls, saying I'll never drink again. Per so, you know, having a serious conversation with my ancestors and God at the same time. Dude, dude, there's like green shit coming out of every orifice. What the fuck? What do you mean what's wrong with her? She's a hypochondriac, that's all. So did this movie get a theatrical release or was it straight to like Showtime and Cinemax? To, it went straight to HBO apparently. Okay, because um, I never really got a clear answer from the documentary. He's That's what still. I say when I become paralyzed all the time. Yeah. Why can't you... I move, Alex? He reminds me and looks a lot like the guy who played Toad in American Graffiti. Did you have you seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah. That's t that's Terry the Tiger. Is that what she's doing? No, she's two with the vegetable oil. She, and that's and Josh, that's after one sip of this shit. She dropped most of it on the ground. What would a full cup do? She said when he found her that they made her eat some of that stuff. So maybe a little went did a I don't know. Oh look, they she's on the floor from Breaking Bad that you've never seen. Never mind. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. I'll just turn into a puddle of goo. <laughs> okay, so they so she turns them into. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> I love it. Academy Award to Darren. Thank you, Darren. This is what American teenage girls do in the 80s. <laughs> there we go. Did it. She's got a Garfield shirt on. I like the style, though. She must hate Mondays. Yeah, she <laughs> Garfield, he's a cat, hates Mondays. Mark Patton actually choreographed this scene. <laughs> They're like, who could we get that had a classic dance scene in a horror movie to choreograph this scene? It was between Mark Patton and uh, God, Crispin Glover. Uh, Crispin Glover, man. He knocked that out of the park in uh, Final Chapter. I would like to see Crispin Glover and Mark Patton have a dance-off. Oh, oh, and the girl from uh, Friday the 13th Part 5. 
the, yeah, the Brooke Bundy is her name. Or no, it's not Brooke Bundy. She's the daughter of the Kristen's mom in real life. You got the wrong number, Grandpa. <laughs> He's well, trying to FaceTime. Old man's watching me again. That's FaceTime before FaceTime. I love the names on the doors. Just on a piece like construction paper. Hospitality. <laughs> do you know how many freaking fillings and root canals I have to do tomorrow morning? I have to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Which room do I go in? Why couldn't somebody put construction paper on the doors? I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where to sleep. <clears throat> I'm tired of this. Come with me, all of you. All I don't take you. a breath when I speak. You don't know where the beer's at? <laughs> well, this is their first night in this house they're borrowing. Okay. They wrote the line backwards. It should have been like, "Come, all of you come with me. I'm tired of this. They just wrote it backwards. Still smoking dope, Ollie. The dad <laughs> talked about that. The dad like doesn't believe anything the kids say, and doesn't take warning signs uh, at all. He doesn't pick up on anything. Yes, oh, you are kid. literally afraid of everything. <laughs> you have screamed this entire movie. Can George get one more button undone on that pajama top, please? Did you get the right connection this time? Yeah. (laughs) Colin, Josh, I need to speak with you. Oh, here we go. Power Rangers. (laughs) (laughs) Lord Zed has showed back up with the goblins. Ay, 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 (laughs) Zordon. (laughs) <laughs> he, Josh looks like he could be Alpha 5. That's all I'm seeing now is Zordon. I, this I've is Zordon. It for myself. <laughs> it is morphing time. May the power <laughs> protect you, Joshua. <laughs> power Rangers. <laughs> the bitch. <laughs> yeah, he, your mother is a meddling bitch, Joshua. <laughs> And your father doesn't (laughs) give a shit about any of you. (laughs) Your father only cares about his burgeoning dental career and and his his pajama tops. (laughs) Yeah, and his pajama tops. (laughs) Love you, George Hardy. Hey, if George Hardy's watching this, uh, that'll make my entire year. Only uh, you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, no. He's got the original shirt still on here. There's, there's the no milk. There's no coffee. There's no nothing. Oh, wow. I wonder, wonder what kind of night those, those fellas had last night. <laughs> Drinking Mountain Dew and just having just a lovemaking session all night long. Hey. It's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No, ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, I mean, and, it ma- and it makes sense, you know. It really... They make a good couple. All right, he's going to stretch out. He's going for a comedy here, like, seriously. Running with a backpack is a bitch, by the way. No, you're supposed to unbutton it. Yeah, I was was surprised. That's a new look for him. No coffee, no milk, no nothing. <laughs> it's nail bog milk. That's not. Well, this I is terrible. Like three weeks old, and it's not out of date yet. This is terrible, wife. I might actually have to buy my family food with my own money. It's a totally new concept. Well, then tighten up your belt and have hunger pains. Well, if your brother hadn't pissed on dinner last night. He might have pissed on dinner, but by God, he can't piss on hospitality. You can thank your little brother for the hunger pains because he pissed on dinner last night. There's the new shirt. No, no logo. <laughs> yep, that's all. it is way brighter. Smokey's coming. 
<laughs> Here comes Roscoe P. Coltrane. Yep. Uh, gee, 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 are you one of the Duke boys? Goo, goo. <laughs> you know you are yeah, the, the Duke, the Dukes of Nilbog County. Looks like it. Uh, no thanks, creepy cop who's leaning back, looking oh, at me he's sexually. Missing. All he's missing is a piece of candy. That's it. Yeah. He doesn't need a can he doesn't need candy though, Josh, when he has a fucking revolver. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you think? You think that sheriff is still alive like today? This is eighty nine. Is he still alive? Maybe. I don't know. Over he, under. He's got that chair reclined. I wonder how many people got out of tickets recently. <laughs> well, he's gotta he's gotta recline that chair so he can get fellatios better from random people jogging down the road. I wonder how many uh tickets people have gotten out of recently. <laughs> it's Here, the rules of the food. road. It's the same wait a second, it's the same food that mom was trying to give Joshua earlier. Is she a goblin? <laughs> Whoa, film theory, man. You can't piss on us. We're hospitable. <laughs> you know what they say. You can't piss on hospitable people. <laughs> Whenever I see them eating Unless this... Unless you pay nine ninety nine. <laughs> Whenever I see them eating these pastries that are green, it reminds me of the Ninja Turtle pies when we were kids. Oh, <laughs> man. Those were good. And the little Ninja Turtle ice cream bars, they still yeah. have those. They're, they're <clears> like <throat> out of... They're like, because of coronavirus, the people that make the... Uh, Ninja Turtle ice cream bars, they're like out of stock at Walmart and stuff until September. They've been Son out since May. I know I used to have a bar. I, I, I used to eat those as a kid, and I found them like a year ago that they were still making them. And I've been buying them, stocking up on them, and they ran out. They got the new design, though. They've ruined the design of the Turtles, man. Oh, my God. Oh, I hate the return or with whatever, the new Ninja Turtles. That show lasted like a quarter of a season and the new action figure line for that for that particular toy line that came out in like 2017, they were on the reduced and clearance uh, aisle two months later. They were I didn't, I didn't mind the 2012 one that my kids got into, the CGI yeah. one. That That's was what fine. Back. But I, I love the original. Oh, my God. The 2003 one was kind of cool, but I was too old for it by then. Oh, this I'll... guy. He... He's intense, Josh. It's the devil's drink. There's no eggs in no bog. That's the God's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> the Gnome King doesn't allow eggs or chickens in no bog. You know that. <laughs> you didn't bring a chicken, did you? It's Jesus' drink. Oh, thank you. I am a tourist. No, <laughs> because it's Neil Bog milk. Yes. <laughs> Nothing thank ominous you. here. <laughs> so a little, little behind the scenes uh, on this store owner. Uh, he was actually released from a mental institution to shoot this film. For real. For a day pass. Yeah, he, he's, he's out pass. on furlough from a mental institution to shoot that scene. And these people here were all uh, on day pass from death row. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just serious. They're all part of the work crew. Uh, just they just wanted some screen time. They're like, wait, hey, we can't afford to pay any extras, so. <laughs> All these guys look like people that are suspects on Forensic Files episodes. They're on their way to the lineup. <laughs> yeah, it's like Mr. Smith was getting off his job as a ranch hand in Hazard County when his wife went missing. She's got a green thumb, though, man. You got to show some respect, though, because having a garden is not easy. No, it's not. You can water it too much. You can underwater it. You can you harvest too early, you know. And but you know, her teeth. At what cost? You know, she she has been neglecting her oral hygiene. A little backstory here, garden. man. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, um, you're fine. You're fine. A little backstory here. This mouthpiece he has, he didn't need it. 
for a certain scene, but like they got tired of him complaining, so they put it on him early. It's in the documentary, <laughs> and they made him wear it for longer. And like they they took his real shoes and nailed the shoes into the pot. Um, they didn't buy him a pair of shoes or anything. They made him use his, put nails to his own shoes. They're like, you're going to have to sacrifice these shoes for eternity. Uh, Why am know, I hungry? In this film. That burger thing earlier makes me want, like, pulled pork right now. Barbecue. Oh, that'd be great. It's the hag from Dead by Daylight, the origin story. <laughs> I'm surprised that lady has such bad oral hygiene with George, George around, you know. That's George could have right. fixed her up. That's why they don't have any scenes together. He would have, like, flipped out. <laughs> He's like, are you serious? Come on now. <laughs> Look at those gnashers. Give me about 15 minutes on my table there. <laughs> Can I ask you one question? Can I ask you two questions? That was cute, though. That was cute. Where he that was talking kid, to the little talking, kid. Yeah. Vegetable cookbook. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. The big revelation, everybody. Hold on to your hats. This one's a doozy. <laughs> George is just over there clueless reading a vegetable cookbook. <laughs> Uh oh. Troll 2. It's this movie sucks ass spelled backwards. <laughs> I still am more entertained than Ghoulies uh, no, right I, now. I, this movie is it's really so bad it's good. I've I've enjoyed this. Yeah, I mean, Ghoulies is I mean, terrible. I mean I hate this movie. You 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 have given us a horrible experience. Yes, please, for the love of God. This is why I don't eat vegetables. This movie right here. <laughs> Everybody goes on a long jog and brings a quart of milk with them. Right, that's... That. Whenever I'm oh. thirsty and dehydrated, I reach for my gallon of milk. <laughs> vitamin D, whole milk. Oh, man. Hot vitamin D milk. What the fuck are you doing in my house, woman? Mr. T actually <laughs> loaned her some of his uh, chains for this scene. You know you look like a witch, right, woman? She's been rode hard and put away wet, Josh. She's been rode hard, put away wet, took back out before she dried off. And <laughs> all kinds Roll, of stuff. Rolled down a hill. <laughs> fell, into a, fell into the Neil Bog swamp. Cakes Crawled with way the welcome on them are a traditional dish in these parts. <laughs> it's... Our welcome cake is traditional. It's it, our welcomes giving. We celebrate every November twenty fourth. Uh, the formation of the town. Everybody had their welcome cakes. <laughs> they, they couldn't possibly think anything's wrong with it. It says welcome on it. And it's it's her tradition, and her ancestors are from Stonehenge, so it's a Stonehenge welcome cake. <laughs> Grandpa Seth. Grandpa Seth. Grandpa Seth. Are you here, Grandpa Seth? Are you here, Grandpa Seth? It always looks like he's straining. Well, yeah, his brain hurts because he's got major delusional issues. Look, it's a, it's it's a it's a meat eaters anonymous, carnivores anonymous over there. I'd have to go to that class because I love meat. God, I, I'm nice big old steak for breakfast tomorrow. Sounds good. Oh. I love like steak and friend. eggs. Who doesn't? My, uh, my best friend doesn't like steak for breakfast, actually. Does he not like it because he's, like, uh, trying to, like, be mentally stronger, like, tougher by withholding no, delicious I, things? No, he's cool. I, what I, it's, uh, and I agree with him on this on some foods. Like, it's just not a breakfast thing for him. Uh, he loves steak. Like, but there's certain things that I don't like. At certain times of the day, too. So I get it. But uh, I like steak and egg. 
Just take it. Well, I can see where your friend's coming from because I like to dip my breakfast meat in my eggs. So I don't really do that with the steak. So the steak is just kind of standalone. So I can totally see where he's coming from. You're going to think I'm weird. I put, I dip my steak in A1 and then in ranch before I eat it. Um, on my the baked ranch potato, is throwing me off. On, on my baked potato, I put butter, salt, pepper, cheese, and ranch dressing. That's, that, I've, I've seen that before, definitely. Is this church? Um, I don't know. I, I didn't know Michael Landon was in this movie. Oh, there he is right there. Yeah. It's his stunt double. <laughs> Kane Hodder. <laughs> oh, hey, look. They're oh. not going to go stay at their house. They're, they're still in town. Every time he says something, I'm getting hungrier. There's like a perfectly cut hole in the ceiling that's perfect. Perfect size for Joshua's face. <laughs> With meat. So, okay, so the, t the whole town is in on this, this thing. Yeah, they're all goblins, man, in disguise. Okay, I've never seen this movie, so uh, this is new to me. Smelly bladder. The store owner looks like he definitely has to go to the bathroom. It's just stinky excrement. Well, you wouldn't know that about the kid. He's needed to go the whole time. Oh, I love how there was like a ramp for the skateboard perfectly there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's the sister's big scene. This is She's going for the gusto here, bud. She's actually she, going over her lines in her head on the way to the trailer. That's what it looks like she was doing. Yeah. Sorry, I was in bed with my boyfriend. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was sleeping with my friend. Oh, that would actually hurt. She's just been lifting weights the, and dancing the entire film. She's ripped. This is the scene where the guy, the, the guy from the Sane Asylum said he wanted to really shove it down the kid's mouth, down his throat, <laughs> in the documentary. He didn't realize yes. the guy filming and interviewing him was the kid uh, from the movie. And he's sitting there saying, I wish I could have choked him to death on the food. Here it comes. <laughs> Up there. Oh, God, what are they going to do to him? No means no. Not that freaking troll again. The one with the eyes. Oh, dead fleas. Dude, if you don't eat it, they're going to give it to you another way. How did he yeah, see anything? His dad just happened to be strolling down the road. Yeah, well, how did he see anything? He had to walk into another room from there. We were giving him some ice cream. <laughs> That's how you give him ice cream. Take him into a rundown building. Dude, that's my son you're talking about, motherfucker. <clears throat> Sorry. I got a potty mouth tonight. That's my that's my son who's actively having delusions of his grandfather. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't touch him. I wouldn't mess with him. Yeah, I wouldn't even let him go anywhere without a supervision. Or in the morning, depending on when the record gets here. I can't believe George, now that he sees that the other family's still in town, he's like, you know, I appreciate that. You know, thanks for the house, but how come there's no fucking food in the fridge? Right? <laughs> you know, why didn't you leave us anything? All that milk and not one box of cereal. <laughs> And tell your kid to take that stupid hat off. Yeah, what's his name? Isaiah or something? There's the 73-year-old sheriff. <laughs> All right, on our, next, on our next podcast, Alex, we need time for <laughs> things to happen. Plot. He's giving himself a pep talk, man. Josh and Alex. <laughs> Slash tracks for lit forever. 
Yeah. Man, this van is getting getting uh, ran pretty hard. There's a lot of like hard stops. Oh, you go t- go go! T- he's with your daughter. You got to tear off his little nuts and eat them. I can't believe you slept with him last night. Well, you told me I could. If you love me, you'll accept me for who I am. I've seen this girl, the daughter, and other things. Oh, no. He's going to tear off your little nuts and eat them. <laughs> All right, this is a graphic scene. He's about to eat little nuts. All three of those guys well, in this scene are wearing the same shirt. Ace Ventura. <laughs> what about our love? Yeah. You said we were special. That I don't care about. Yeah, it's like, who are you fooling here? Who are you talking to, bud? Okay, he's got the he's got the other yellow shirt on right here because there's no logo. Goes to this house just because the town people said, "Hey, your friend said to go to this house." Yeah. Arnold. Yeah, yeah, Arnold. That's who gave the message. He looks like he's like been slipped a Mickey. Or he's on GHB right now or something. Or. Poor Darren, like they put that mouthpiece on him so long. Whenever I'm dizzy, I like to say outside how di- say out loud how dizzy I am. You know, that's actually not bad. Not bad. No, Practical that's effects. Good. That's not bad. Bad at all. That is actually good, Did in you my take opinion. Take the cup of broth out of his hand before turning him into a plant. He's saying, oh, my God. This poor guy is just worn out from being in this movie. He's like, well, I got to do what? I got to go get my own shirt. What do you want me to do now? What? I didn't know his name was Drew until this very second. (laughs) This fucking director (laughs) asked me to do what? (laughs) Exhausted. Oh, Oh my God. God. They killed Arnold. You bastards. Oh, it's not a watermelon vine, that's for sure. <laughs> He's like, Drew, you should really get that checked out. <laughs> one in four, man. One in four. <clears throat> Dude, you're going to, like, rip his face off. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, I don't know if I just start ripping branches out of him. Oh, Don't fret. <laughs> yeah, don't stress out, man. Somebody, you ever said don't fret? No. <laughs> Quicker than that. I, I, he's okay. So he, he, the guy who's turned into the tree is playing it off like he's, uh, just kind of like, sort of. Uh, bothered by this guy. He kind of rolled his eyes like he was yeah. in a sitcom or something. This is just another Tuesday. Yeah, I go, can you believe this guy? He's having a hard time pulling, you know, pulling me right now. This is like a inconvenience. God, have you never pulled one of your best friends when they're half plant before? <laughs> Put you back into it. Not Uh-oh, this fucking lady again. Well, hello. <laughs> shit she wants it she takes it that was the pimp smack of death right there that'd be her finishing move if she was a wrestler yeah she's got a wrestler name it's like something something gil good or whatever irene velveteen rabbit gil good <laughs> irene the the velveteen dream with the tree smash pimp smack timber I'm going to turn you into kindling. 
If a psycho looking person has a chainsaw in front of me, the last thing I'm going to do is say, what are you going to do to me with that? <laughs> I think I'll have it figured out. He's completely screwed, though. Like, what's oh, he going to no. do? He hurt my friend, and now he's going to cut me with the chainsaw. Wait, was he laughing hysterically? Yeah, because she was, like, having a hard time cutting through him. And now he's a shake. Oh, great. Another one of those juice freaks that are always like, you need to go on a juice cleanse, Josh. You need to do a cleanse. Let me just make one for you. It's got kale. It's got uh, spinach. It's got artichoke, Josh. It's so good. It's got your best friend, Chris. Yeah, it's got your best friend in it. You just need a cleanse, a juice cleanse. That's what I've been trying to figure out for an hour. Yeah, what what the hell is going on? Oh, if I had never seen this movie, like which I haven't, but if I like in the documentary when the people from George's Town go to watch this movie, I would be so lost. Oh, you know, some of those people probably were like. I want to get up and leave, but I don't want to offend George. He's such a exactly. nice guy. But they wrote, they raised the money for a local charity, so that. We're gonna tie your son up and give him ice cream this time, so he don't get away. <laughs> the son's like, I don't believe these bastards. I, I don't believe them. Grandpa and I do not trust this guy. And it's all green. And it's all sweets, again. It's our other tradition, the uh, welcome cakes and the eat up cakes. <laughs> you have to you know, there's, on the food this time. Yeah, I was going to say, there's only one, one, only one way to save his family. He's going to have to piss on this stuff <laughs> again. You know what would have stopped him from doing it if one of the cakes said hospitality? He would have tried, <laughs> and nothing would have happened. Because why? You don't piss on hospitality. You can't piss on, has <laughs> on hospitality. Hey, hey. so his, um, if the little kid later in life, he's like, well, I had so much success, you know, saving my family by pissing on this stuff. I wonder if he could, like, start just, like, I wonder if I could help things in the future by pissing on those things that I don't like also. <laughs> Like his that's boss. Just his yeah, that's just his answer. He just pisses on everything. The pisser. <laughs> He's like, oh man, there, there, there he goes again. He's pissing on something. He obviously his doesn't just approve. His tub thumping. A chumba wumba. <laughs> <laughs> pissing the night away. Pissing the night away. Grandpa Seth, what has happened to you? Let yourself go. <laughs> Grandpa Sam! <laughs> that guy's like, I'm supposed to get my medication an hour ago. You don't have to stop <laughs> hey, this scene is filmed just like that 70s show. <laughs> like they're in the basement well, passing around. I've never seen that 70s show. What's that? I've never seen that 70s show. Never? I'm just going to be, I'm just being like you. I've never seen Oh, get out of here. Oh, yeah, she was the goblin. She got thrown back through the mirror, and Grandpa Seth can now use an axe and, and physically hurt people, even though he's a ghost. It all makes sense. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I know how to butcher people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah little scamp. Um, Grandpa's sweating his ass off in this scene. I wasn't aware that ghosts could sweat. <laughs> He is such a bad influence on his grandson, man. He on everything. Here's a Molotov cocktail. Burn the house down, son. <laughs> She's got to cauterize that wound. Good Lord, she is like super dehydrated. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a regenerative chamber. Hey, put your acting career in there now. Yeah, please. 
Why does her appearance all of a sudden... Oh, she let her hair down. And her mouth is like... She's got herpes all over her face really now. Really dehydrated. Cold sores everywhere. Dang. Blistex would do her good. God, it's like how did when... anybody on the set of this movie... Any any aspiring actors and actresses out there, let me know in the comment section if you are so wanting to be in a movie, if you would do a movie like this, knowing how bad it is, and and would you want to be a part of this for the rest of your life? I'm just curious. Um, I used to want to be an actor, so I probably would have done it, you know, as a young actor. I'm just curious if other people would, because they had to know it was a bad movie, right? Yeah, I'm sure they had an inkling <clears throat> that it was garbage. Maybe the kids didn't, but the grown-ups had to. I'm ba I can never clap on time at like churches and stuff, so I just give up. I don't care. Why don't you do it? Why are you making your stun in the comp? Not unless you have baloney. Oops, I've said too much. <laughs> Bullets. Well, my only weakness. The dad, the grandpa has been in hell. He just told him to go back to his kingdom of shadow. Jesus Christ. The grandpa was burning in hell? What, what did he do? That sweet old man? Well, he's been haunting the piss out of his grandson the entire film. I don't know how sweet he is. Okay, yeah, he's pretty demonic. He's tossing Molotov cocktails, axing people. Be on him, Joshua. Be on him. Yeah, piss on Grandpa. That'll fix everything. This guy kind of looks like Julian from the Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> Just why don't he? Wait, if he could do that, why did why did he need Joshua to throw a Molotov cocktail at the house? Why not just snap his fingers and set the house on fire with that lightning? Yeah, that's definitely the same guy that was there a second ago. By the way, definitely. Yeah, that, the guy who was on fire had a much smaller build. <laughs> George knew exactly where the fire extinguisher was. Uh, why didn't the kid just piss on him? He could have put him out. Because the guy's middle name is Hospitality. And you what? Can't you, piss on Hospitality. Even if you try, it just won't come out. Oh, and there's a troll. No. A, a goblin. goblin. A goblin. A goblin. Neobogian. Like, what the hell? That's not the guy. That's a, that's a Neobog person. They're all like, uh, shit. We <laughs> promised... Exit stage right even. It's the devil's fire extinguisher. Okay, those eyes on her would be enough for me to say, okay, never mind, go home. Yeah, the mom's got intense eyes. The daughter is so, oh my God, her acting is just so bad. Those glasses even have lenses in them. It's like it's like the, it's like Chris Hemsworth from Ghostbusters 2016 got tired of cleaning the lenses, so he just uh, took, took them out. out. Can't wait to see him play Hulk Hogan. That's gonna be interesting. Uh, neither can I, brother. Brother, dude. And what you gonna do when Thor runs <laughs> wild on you, dude? Oh yeah, the macho <laughs> man. Ooh, yeah. yeah, can Loki, Tom Hiddleston, please play Loki or play Macho Man in that biopic, please? Oh, he would be better playing the genius. Oh, God. Hey, the genius got a W over Hogan on Saturday Night's Main Event by count out. <laughs> Who's the Lord of the Magic Rock of Stonehenge? Is his name like Bob? Ooh, she's having a rough day, Josh. 
<laughs> this guy's like, I just came out here to get some puss, man. And then, then all this is happening. This really sucks, dude. Came out there to get some stat, but then <laughs> he learned some new stuff about himself. And I just came out here to get some trim, man. And I ended up sleeping with my buddy, man. Okay, now it's nighttime. Now you, you can say something about nighttime and it, it, it works. Why? Where's the MCA? Where, when's that start? It's like, it's like the record got stuck. Like, why, 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 why? What was the unneeded focusing on the bubble popping for that wow, long? she's actually, I'm not going to lie, she's actually pretty. If that's the same actress. It's got to be. <clears throat> Could use a little lift there, but... She's pretty. It's all right. <laughs> she looks like one of them, like Garfield's, like on a window, you know, like with the yeah, suction yeah. cups. She's got <laughs> suction cups on her hands. Now eat the damn sandwiches. I've actually had a Grubhub delivery like that. I think that guy works <laughs> for Grubhub. And vinegar's the devil's additive. You're going to eat this shit you ordered from Grubhub, and you're going to like it, and you're going to leave a tip on the line right here. And a five-star rating on Yelp. <laughs> or else we'll kill you violently. Violently. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to kill you regardless, but uh, we're going to kill you violently this time. Too bad our slasher guy doesn't just tell us to eat sandwiches instead of threatening to kill us. We have to get him out of hell where he's burning eternally. <laughs> the boyfriend is of the girl is like, what the hell did I get myself into with this family? He'll be back soon. We can talk about things. I don't like how we left things. Yeah, he's. They had a, they their honestly, first lovers' no quarrel. Joking. They met. They they honestly look like a cute couple, man. Like I saw the love there when they were in bed together. They were so comfortable. Half of this movie was brought to you by L.A. Looks, the the hair gel in the eighties. <laughs> All their hair is like. I want over. someone to explain this scene to me, Alex. I know you've not seen it. Explain this scene to me. I feel like it was added to the movie like after it was finished. Just for... Well, she's a pretty girl holding like a phallic like corn of co cool. you know, corn on the cob. No, it gets just watch. There's some premature population population going on in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Close up on her lips, holding the phallic corn. He was talking about ladies earlier. They set this up. The music really playing outside. It, the music is totally taking me out of the scene if this is supposed to be scary. <laughs> exactly. It sounds like porno music. Look at my leg. Got a garter on. Where, where was the camera filming her? Did her chest get bigger since the last scene? Did she like go get a? I think they got bigger. Isn't this what you wanted? This is awesome. Call me Drew if you want to. Yeah, we okay. uh, we can go watch my TV. We have two channels. And one of the channels I just saw you walking up to the camper on. But yeah, come on in. There's nothing weird about this whatsoever. Yeah, bring your corn. Yeah. You got some green beans? <laughs> bring your corn. You have any fried chicken? That's one of my oh, favorite meals, by the way. Dude, shit. Dude, fried Actually, chicken. Actually, I want Popeyes. Corn. Who doesn't want Popeyes? Popeyes is exquisite. I love the spicy stuff. Mm-hmm. Their biscuits are really good, too. 
Yeah, it's like KFCs have just gotten so dry. Like when you eat them, it's like your mouth is just completely dry after one bite. It's like every uh, time I go to KFC, uh, they act like they don't want me there. The people that work there, they just do not want to take my order at all. One time I went, they were out of chicken, Josh. No joke. I was like, well, what the hell am I going to order? Just a bunch of sides? <laughs> sides. Just the beans and macaroni. And liver, and... fried liver. Yeah, what, what am I eating here? I used to love their country fried steak with brown gravy, and they got rid of it. They got KFC had a thing called a twister, which was like a like a wrap, and they had this really good sauce and cheese and stuff on it with some bacon. That thing was money. You'd get a side of Mojo's or JoJo's, a drink and a twister for three ninety nine. I'd get it all the time. Their buffalo snackers were amazing. Uh huh. Yeah, but yeah, now they got chicken, chicken little too. buffalo. They got I was chicken. just gonna say chicken littles. Well, they got buffalo chicken littles now, but it's not the same buffalo they had on the snackers. But it's good. Uh, explain this scene to me, man. Right. What was the director thinking? I think of the uh, director and uh, thinking of a horror movie and what he would do here with the pot with the corn. I think he let his wife handle a this bippity scene. Bippity boppity again. boppity boopity corn, man. <laughs> a gobbity gooly the corn. It's, it's, we it's, are it's doing the Family Guy joke, right? Is that the reference we're making? <laughs> Whenever he was trying to talk Italian. All right, here oh. we go. Here we go. It's on. Now this nope. is some. This is some hardcore corn. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't keep an eye on the stove, man. Is that soft core corn or hardcore corn? <laughs> is it internet corn since we're watching it on the internet? <laughs> as long as it's not kitty corn, we're okay. At least they weren't eating baby corn. Oh, God. <laughs> he, the, the kid sounds bitchy and whiny more than anything, more than desperate. Kid is in hell, or the grandpa's in hell. <laughs> Grandpa Seth, please. Well, they didn't. I'm pretty sure they know you're there. All right, they didn't eat the sandwiches. Let's go kill them by little. Pretty, pretty, please, with the cherry on top. There's going to be popcorn, Grandpa Seth. Sorry, it's it's 7 o'clock. It's when the devil puts a pineapple up me. i got to wait my turn. <laughs> Hitler's in front of me. It's hot down here in hell. I mean, that guy did say that, right? Go back to hell? Yeah, yeah. He said, go back to hell. I mean... Turn the fan off. I don't think it's blowing that hard, Joshua. <laughs> yeah, it's not even blowing the candles. Oh, now it is. It's That's like focused, barely so. moving their hair, and they're like... <gasps> <laughs> they just have, like, one of those uh, clip-on fans that you put on, like, a truck. <laughs> a truck dashboard. <laughs> You're gonna kill me. I'm trying to take a drink. It's, like, all they have. Yes. What? <laughs> So my kid really isn't a psycho. <laughs> yes, Josh, yes, uh-huh. Because it's one of the rules. <laughs> that, writing, that nobody has explained. Why didn't you tell us this from the beginning? This could have helped us over an hour ago, Grandpa. E.T. phone home. I want to tie. I want to contact Ty Cobb. <laughs> a little Beetlejuice reference for you. And he's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he died. Ah! I made him take my place in hell. See, in every Joshua, there's a little cop. It's a bit ghoulish. I did not say ghoulies. Don't talk. Quick, upstairs for, for, for a standard root canal, family. Is that one mask going to make an appearance? Which room do we go into? I don't know which is which. You better Read get your ass upstairs, George. Morning. Be careful, you're going to knock the mask off. 
Ooh, Ooh that, that looks like it hurt. Yeah, that stunt looked kind of gnarly. I thought he turned into a goblin. What the fuck? Did, did we not see him turn into a goblin? I don't remember seeing him turn into a goblin, no. It, like, his head went down, and then all of a sudden a goblin set up in the chair, and that's what I thought happened. I guess that it was goes like, by the same rules as Seth. It was like the old uh, the old sitcoms. They'd, like, think something, they'd leave it as a setup, like something was going to happen, and then there'd be a cutaway, and then you come back from the commercial break, and he'd be safe. Oh, he swapped places. Uh, the grandpa let him swap places with the goblin. See, he's in the church house thing now. Oh, well, that's excellent storytelling when I have to be explained it. <laughs> I was in our house, and now I'm in the church. Oh, my God. <laughs> Love you, Darren. I'm guessing this is the climax. Uh, are you guessing that because of it's been like an hour and 15 minutes? No, it's got very Freddy's Revenge vibes here, like where they're going to like the power plant right now. He's going to run into some dogs with human faces on them, and then he's going to have to kiss uh, Meryl Streep. And Wait then... till you see how they beat the, the, the goblins, man. A spoiler! They beat them? Yeah. Spoiler, Josh! I oh, sure no! Win. You weren't sure, were you? Yeah. Seth drags everybody to hell and takes Yeah, and... that could happen. The, the real plot is Grandpa Seth, he's sacrificed there <laughs> to get out of hell. They, they have to replace him. Well, damn, is it a pig? <laughs> Get away, Stop monster! <laughs> it looks this like we're in like a haunted house you go through at Halloween. Uh -huh, it's got like a really bad budget one. Boogity, and, boogity, boom. Yeah, and the people playing the monsters are just phoning it in because it's like their fourth shift of the day. They're like, I don't really give a shit if I scare this person. Ooh. Goblins have nards. Sure do. Not only because George hasn't torn him off and ate him yet and ate him yet. <laughs> but if he was there, he'd tear off their little nuts and eat them. Okay, Grandpa Seth, your rules are getting ridiculous now. Grandpa no. Seth is the main one badass. I'm gonna eat you now because I'm really a demon. I'm dead. In hell. Yeah, I've been in hell. <laughs> Grandpa Seth actually had a cameo in Freddy vs. Jason when Freddy was searching the bowels of hell uh, that could help Springwood remember him. Yeah, he Grandpa found... Seth was option B. Yeah, he's option B. Did you know that? I had to search the bowels of hell. He has just as many role changes as Freddy's Revenge. <laughs> exactly. It's like, what is going on here? How does this fit? That's actually Hell's ass crack. Right? <laughs> I have no idea if this will work, but I hope it does. It might <laughs> fry you and replace you with me. I take your place and you burn in hell, but let's try it. Yeah, you can come visit me and read books that don't exist. <laughs> <this> <laughs> right? time. Visit me at the nursing home and yeah. read me stories. Yeah, it's not read that me, bad. Read me Alex <laughs> Alex and the Monster, but the book is called Josh and the Monster. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got sharp sticks. We're going to hit you with them. We're Irish for some reason. Josh made yeah. us that way. <laughs> I don't know why, but we're going to stick these sticks in you. We are. Come here, laddie. My mouth don't move. My eyes are plastic. Your the mouth? mouth? The mom has, like, four lines in this movie. I know. Who are the goblins? And Look at this party. It's a yeah, feast. Si ah! sing, that, sing that song I like. <laughs> Old McDonald had a farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you guys are humans, right? Right? Wait, she didn't even kill him? 
If I had a nickel for every time I woke up after an erection like that. <laughs> wait, wait. She didn't kill him? She just actually wanted to get a piece? I guess so. She's like, you know what? This this has all gotten really heavy really fast. I need to get me. I need to go get me a little piece. Have some popcorn and think things so. over. What? Did you enjoy it that much? Oh, she's howling at the moon, baby. <clears throat> Damn, dude. Bark at the moon. All kids are eating bus. What did he say? All kids are cutting bus? No, I said so, or something's calling us. I think I she was calling them. Oh, you did. Sorry. I, was, <laughs> I blacked I, out. I apologize. Ikea is cutting class. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go yeah. into Satan's ass crack in a moment here, grandson. What? So basically like the Care Bears? Care Bear Countdown. Five, Five four, four, three, two, one. Two, one. <coughs> it's the Care Bear Countdown. <laughs> Who is that coming from somewhere <laughs> up in the sky? <laughs> so she, 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 she diddled the guy in the RV, had popcorn, yeah. screamed at the moon, and then yep. got back in time to... Kill the kid. This scene is right after the walk of shame for her when she's leaving that RV. So, are we agreement? She just wanted to get a little before the final fight? Uh, yeah, I think so. But, you know, if her trainer for this fight was Mickey and Rocky, she'd, she'd understand that sex weakens legs. So, she shouldn't have uh, popped that guy's corn. Popped his corn? Yeah, popped his corn. Whatever she has on her face, like, let's just say it is an STD uh, and he's be got safe. It now. Yeah, he's got it now, for sure. One in four people, man. One in four people. <laughs> he's got Think it. about that. He's got it for sure. No, you're not. That looks like a glowing piece of the aggro crag from the show Guts. God, I love Guts. Yeah. Do, 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 do you have it? Do, 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 do you have it? On a hamburger bun. <laughs> oh, because they're vegetarian. We will kill you violently. Dude, that's not a double decker. That's a whole package of bologna on that. Table. That is a whole package of bar s bologna. He hasn't swallowed it yet. Just knock it out of his hand. This kid is a genius. Who knew the power of deli meat would have such an effect on them? <laughs> bar S. No. <laughs> the power of Bar S compels you. No. You know, if you find yourself eating Bar S hot dogs, you are at the bottom of the barrel, Josh. You have, life has really got you by the, by the ass hairs. I like bar S bologna. It's, it's, it's pretty salty, Josh. It's not bologna, I don't think. Uh, have you ever had a bologna bowl? Have you ever put a piece of bologna in a microwave? In what? A bologna bowl. You take a piece of bologna, you put it in a microwave, and it like forms yeah. up into a bowl. And then you fill it with whatever condiments you want. They're easy to kill. They just stand there and take it. <laughs> I could My see mask is too hot. Oh. I, know. I could see through his eye holes and see the guy's face almost. At least it's his eye hole you can see. <laughs> we had to get another shot of the that man. Oh, my God. Stop showing that one. It's the worst one. I know. Less screen time for that one. would I'd appreciate that very much. At least the other masks have mouths and stuff, you know? But that one's, like, obviously... That's pretty cool looking. Did she just yell brains? She looks like the girl at the end of the Evil Dead remake. When she comes out of the cabin, she's got blood all over her, she's smoking a cigarette.
George, who are the goblins? The goblins? All them trolls, man. Killed them all. I mean, yeah. Oh, they're back home. Seems like a happy ending for everybody, right? Yeah. No AC, apparently. Yeah, like two of my friends died, and I left the other one out there, and he hooked up with Gilgood. We're over now. Yeah, where's the RV? Who's Who owned that RV, by the way? He lost it to his friend in the divorce. Who keeps their fruit in the fridge like uh, that? Next to the baloney. And it hasn't gone bad the whole time they've been gone. She's been wearing that yellow shirt for a week now. She didn't have to buy it herself, at least. Yeah. Something tells me that piece of uh, fruit is also is going to make her a troll, right? She's getting more lines now than she had in the entire movie. In the entire movie. Grandpa Seth, are you still burning in hell? You want to play train with me? Ooh, he's got an Oakland A's pennant, man. I like this kid even more. And he's got two Mets references, Dwight Gooden and Daryl Strawberry. Duh, it's the devil's team. <laughs> duh, 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 duh. Grandpa Seth? Up there. I thought he was in hell. Hell's up now? <laughs> he said go back to hell. Joshua, I'm in hell. Not heaven. Look down. His release from hell was to film this movie and basically <laughs> be in hell again. Wait, it said Joshua, eat up. Who's whispering that? <laughs> Joshua. It, did, did they bring home an eat up cake and a welcome cake? I don't know, but I see Winnie the Pooh. I'm digging that. And and Piglet, too. Oh, bother. Fred and Barney Flintstone in there somewhere, too. <laughs> hey, Fred, have you seen this movie, Troll 2? It's a pile of shit, Fred. Have you seen it, Fred? <laughs> oh, hey, Barney, Fred. I don't want to watch that shitty movie with you, Barney. Uh, hey, Fred, you watch hey. Troll 2? Hey, Fred, hey, Fred. you see Troll 2, Fred? Goofy's just like seeing it jumps off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bo Winkle's like, this movie's <laughs> this is the worst movie I've ever seen because I'm a moose. Freddy's like, and you say Dream Child's bad? Ha <laughs> 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 Yeah, have you? <laughs> Yummy, mom is so good. What if it's good mom is so yummy? She said she's taking a shower. That's dark. I thought he was going to get his head stuck in there like in all the sitcoms of the 80s. <laughs> Every that... sitcom in the 80s, some, a kid got their head stuck in the banister. Uh-oh. You thought you beat him, didn't you? <laughs> you you shouldn't have tried to piss on hospitality. <laughs> you thought you beat him, you little shit. Pee on this. <laughs> and then they're going to eat me. Oh, my God. Boobies. Don't worry, kid. They're not eating her. They're just rubbing it on their masks. So she's not coming back for the sequel, obviously. Oh. They were going to make a Troll 2 part of that documentary. I wish they'd reboot the franchise. I wish they could make like a Troll Two pre equal, like or just a continuation of the, you know. You like I think I can see a cavity or a filling in his mouth. You say, do you like dim sum, Joshua? Yeah. I can never understand what they're saying. They um, were asking him to do reshoots, and that was his genuine reaction. So there you go, Slashaholics and Slash Tracks viewers, listeners, whatever you're doing. Uh, that was Troll 2. You watched it with us, and we all survived it. Um, 
yeah, let's 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 unbox this movie a little bit, and uh, let's get your first impressions on Troll Two, Alex. All right, so this is episode five. Um, it's not worse than Ghoulies. Ghoulies still to me is the worst one we've seen, <laughs> but but I will I will say, of the five that we've watched, it is damn close to being as bad as Ghoulies because I was having a really hard time understanding this plot. And that part at the end where it was supposed to be like, uh, you know, you thought everything was safe, right? It's like, eh, like, you know, like it totally missed, swung and missed. The <laughs> acting, uh, they were all wooden. You could tell none of them were, were trained. They, they have the bottom of the barrel people in this film for a reason. You know, it was very, very low budget and it shows. But there's a few parts that are very charming. So uh, if, if we're going to rate this, on five spoiled containers of milk, five being the best, one being the worst, I'm going to give this half a spoiled container of milk. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it one gallon of the devil's drink. Um, <laughs> it's something out of five. Out of five. Out of five gallons of the devil's drink. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can I can watch this movie for fun, you know, more than once. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's happen. I can't watch Ghoulies again. No. I can't watch Ghostbusters twenty sixteen again. Um, no, I'll, we don't I have watch, time for Ghostbusters. <laughs> right, I can watch Jason X and Freddy's Dead all the time. Um, uh, I, dude, I could watch a double feature of that this evening. Yeah, Jason like, X and Freddy's Dead. I could watch both tonight. Uh, but yeah, this one Troll Two. We knew what we were getting into. And uh, it was it was more fun than I thought it would be. Uh, I knew from the beginning when 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 young boy Peter, the old man, the, the man running through the forest, and then the book is David David or Davy and the Goblin. Um, just it was a lot of fun. Grandpa's burning in hell, trying to help his son defeat some goblins. He's got powers that change every five seconds and his abilities. Uh, you know, he could have done that lightning thing at the beginning and just blew up their van so they couldn't go but uh was the grandpa so okay so the grandpa's in hell but like <laughs> is he trying to regain is he trying to by helping his grandson and his family is he trying to get his way out of hell is that what they're trying to do there i don't know if i if i'm dead i just i don't want to keep having to come back let me just be a ghost let me just move yeah <laughs> you know, let me pass on shit i i died so i didn't have to deal with this shit anymore you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. You're seriously though. I'm sure the grandpa was doing a lot of the parenting because you know, those parents were not invested in their children whatsoever. Emotionally <laughs> like, Oh, you know, my son's seen his dead grandfather. It's like, nah, just another Tuesday. Like no big deal. He'll grow out of it. Josh. He'll grow well, the out. Dad, of it. The dad even said, well, I had an imaginary playmate whenever I was a kid, you know, um, it was it your dead grandpa. Cause if it wasn't your dead grandpa, <laughs> then, yeah, you know, I don't think it's the same thing. Did you uh, have an imaginary uh, friend? Because I didn't. I, I would just, like, no. have stuffed animals and stuff. No, I didn't. My daughter did, and it freaked me out sometimes because um, I thought it was a ghost and not a uh, imaginary friend. We lived in this apartment, and actually there's some – I'll share this the written story I wrote about the true story. There was a spirit she said she saw whenever she was, like, two and three – called yeah. old mom old mom and she said old mom was all burnt up and on fire and old mom was watching me to make sure i was a good dad and okay. like i would be and she was like a baby there's no way she could have known to say stuff like that like we were in the i'd be in the kitchen cooking and she would like stand in front of me and like be looking behind me and i'd be like what are you doing and i'd look behind me and she'd be like old mom's there and it's creepy shit, man. Creepy Making shit. Making sure you're following the Kraft macaroni and cheese recipe to a T. Yeah, and I make sure I'm not cooking generic mac and cheese. <laughs> or serving her bar S bologna bowls. Or trying to piss on hospitality. Because um, you can't. You can't even if you wanted to. Yeah, you, if you try to, nothing's coming out. You're going to have to see a urologist or something. Because uh, like when uh, I'm in a public bathroom, I cannot squeeze a drop out. I am I am one of the 17 percent of males that can't piss next to somebody. <laughs> I can't either. So me neither. Uh, we're both we're both the same. Or if someone's or if I can hear loud talking, 
like yeah. really close outside the door. I'm like, will you shut the hell up so I can piss? Even if I see like shadows moving outside the door or, or just a whisper, anything, you know? Yeah, anything. Um, <laughs> we're like talking about alone. our bathroom yeah. habits now. Um, I need to be alone in a locked house with nobody coming over at any time, anytime soon. Exactly. You're like you're like a shit brick on American Pie. Oh yeah, like, like, I you know home. I lived right next to my house in high school, like re- like a block away, and I <laughs> I would go to my house to use the bathroom. Yep. Um, so yeah, if anybody in the comment section has ever successfully pissed on hospitality, we would like to know about it, and we need some proof. (laughs) We need some proof that it actually happened. Yeah, Um, we're not going to believe you, but please try to provide us with proof, because it can't happen, but we want to see if it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, We've tried, and we just can't do it. Um, but yeah, Troll 2, man, it's, it's got a certain cheesy charm to it. Uh, it's a movie I can see myself watching in another couple years, you know, with introducing it to somebody. It's kind of like a curse that you just pass on to people, you know? You, you want to pass... <laughs> it's Leprechaun <laughs> in space, you know? It's like, here, <laughs> check this movie out. But really, you're just trying to lift the curse off of you and put it on someone else. Put it, bring it, give it to somebody else. Like, uh, I've said this before, like a timeshare. It's like, no, it's a great deal. Like, you know, you won't even think of the payment every month. You know, you'll use it more than you think, you know? You'll love it. My phone, I'll just get phone. Just wrap it up or die. Oh fuck! <laughs> Jesus All Christ! Right. All right. Well, Pretty straightforward. <laughs> um. Yeah. So let us know what you thought of Troll Two. If you enjoyed our little commentary here, um, we don't really have to wrap it up, man. If you've got anything else to say, um, but there's really not much more to say. Baloney kills goblins. Um, making out with a goblin witch produces popcorn. Um, what else did we learn in this movie? Um, Grandpas can come back from hell and assist you in life or death situations. And they can put together a team of teenagers with attitude. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> save the world from reading. Ay, 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 Joshua! Ay, ay. Well, this has been the 80s Slasher Librarian saying thank you so much for for watching, listening, whatever you did. Um, Be excellent to each other, and may the power protect you. Alex? Hey, thank you very much, guys. Mahalo. See you next next time. Uh, Carnosaur 1 and 2, double feature. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Not really. I hate uh, hate bad movies, so no, I'm not looking forward to that much, but... uh... I'll do what I have to do to, to keep living. So Hey, after that comes Redneck Zombies, man. Oh, man. That's, uh, that's a real shitter. You're going to love it. Awesome. I can't wait. Uh, good night, Alex. Good night, everybody. See you later.